Father, come into this place this morning, oh God. We need a fresh anointing, a newness of your Holy Spirit in this place. Your word says where you are, oh Father, is where we wanna be, oh Lord Jesus. This morning as we enter into your presence, oh God, as we come before your throne room, oh Father, make us new, oh God, this morning. Renew our spirit. Renew our heart, Father, our commitment to you, O God. Let there be a newness of joy, a newness of healing, restoration in Jesus' name in this place, O God. I ask you, Father, that every person in the sound of my voice, O God, wherever they are, Father, whatever they may be going through, O Father, that they will be restored in you this morning, O God. Let your Holy Spirit and newness come into this place this morning, O God. Let your spirit be able, Father, to intertwine into whatever the situation is, oh God. And let there be newness, oh Father, of thought this morning in this place, this morning, oh God. We commit our ways, our thoughts, our desires to you, Jesus. Let there be nothing else in this place, oh God. But Holy Spirit, arise in this place, oh God. Arise and restore in this place in Jesus' name, oh God. Oh Father, we put on the garden.
hope is in you, oh Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus. You fight our battles, oh God.
ask God. Your enemy crashed to their knees as we rise up in worship. When trials unleashed like a flood, the battle. victory is yours. The victory is yours. You're riding on the storm. Your name is unfailing. The kingdoms rise and fall. Your throne withstands it all. Your name is unchanged.
the name of Jesus high this morning. The name that is unshaken. The name that is unshaken. Yes, Jesus, Jesus. Mm. When we think of the cross, Jesus, we think of the sacrifice that you made. <clears throat> I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my savior on that cursed tree yes his body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down Sing with me. Oh, praise the name. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing your praise. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord our God. 
your name this morning. Praise you, God. You are a good God. Despite, Father, the many things that may be happening around us and to us, you are still faithful because we are still standing, God. Thank you, Lord. No matter what the enemy has planned, God, you have provided a way of escape, so we praise you this day. No matter what the enemy tries to put on us, God, you have given us victory over the enemy. For that, we praise you, O oh God. Lord, even though it may seem that we have fallen, but God, there's still breath in our lungs, so therefore we still praise you. Everything may not be working out the way we wanted, God, but you are still there right beside us, so we praise you. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Father, we come before you. Father, with all humility, Father, knowing you were the one that woke us up this morning. You woke us up, oh God. You put strength in our body, Father. You put the breath in our lungs, oh God. We thank you, Lord. Lord, your word declares, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Come on, if you have breath in your lungs, come on, just open up your mouth and just give him a praise that he is worthy of. We honor you, Lord, this day. Father, we bring our country before you. We pray over this nation. We pray over our leaders, oh God. We thank you that you will move mightily, Lord, amongst our leaders. We pray for them, Father. We pray, Father, that you will have mercy upon this nation. Have mercy upon this nation, oh God. Lord, we know as the people of God that your return is very close. But God, as we wait every day, I pray, Father, that we would continue, Lord, to share your, your love and the gospel to the hurting, to the lost, to the wounded. Lord, that they may find hope in you. I thank you, Lord. We pray, Father, for the lost, those who are unsaved, Father, there may be some in our families. Father, there may be some in our neighborhood, in our workplaces. Father, as we are tearing, God, I pray you will empower us, Lord, to reach those who don't know you. Thank you, Lord. We pray for every family of this church. We just pray a blessing upon them, God. We thank you for those that are here. We thank you, Father, that you'll meet every need. But God, more than that, Father, I pray they'll realize that you are all that we need. Thank you, Father. Father, we lift up our pastor and pastor and we pray that you will bless them, Father, body, mind, and spirit. I pray you strengthen them, Lord, each and every day. We cover their children and their grandchildren. We plead the blood of Jesus over them, God. I thank you, Lord. You are such a good God. I pray, Father, this morning as the word is being delivered, that your Holy Spirit will move in a mighty way. I pray for revelation, God, not just information. I pray revelation will break forth in their spirit, oh God, this day. Because revelation will bring forth transformation. And Father, we submit ourselves this day and we give you all the glory, Father, and all the praise for you are worthy. 
In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen and amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap offering. Before you see it, turn around and shake your neighbor's hand. Tell them you're glad to see them. We're so glad to see all of you here uh, with us this morning, and we want to welcome all of you. Uh, I know we have quite a few visitors here. If you're visiting for the first time here, uh, we'd like for you to stand right where you're at so we could welcome you. If this is your first time here at IBC? Amen. God bless you, sir. Thank you for being here with us. IBC, make sure you, you greet him before he, uh, we leave this day. Anybody else? Anybody else? Thank you. You may be seated. Anybody else? Well, good. We have a, a lot on the docket today, uh, so we want to... Uh, welcome all those families that are represented here, and uh, we thank God for each and every one of you. So we want to go ahead and begin without further ado. If you have your Bibles with you, I'd like for you to turn to the Gospel of, of John, chapter 6. John, chapter 6. I'm going to read from verse 63 to 69. John chapter 6, verses 63 to 69. And we go. The Spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. And the very words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But some of you do not believe me. For Jesus knew from the beginning which ones didn't believe, and he knew who would betray him. And he said, that is why I said that people can't come to me unless the Father gives them to me. At this point, many of his disciples turned away and deserted him. Then Jesus turned to the twelve and asked, are you also going to leave? Simon Peter replied, Lord, to whom would we go? You have the words that give eternal life. We believe and we know that you are the Holy One of God. God willing, today and next Sunday, I'm going to be on the topic. Well, today I'm going to preach on the, uh, the topic of God is enough. God is enough. You know, in, in, in today's society, anytime you go anywhere, people always want to offer a little something more or extra to whatever you ordered. We go, you may uh, go to the restaurant and, and, you know, especially if you go to McDonald's, they'll ask you, do you want, especially if you get a happy meal, they want, do you want extra fries? And they want to add things extra. You go buy a car. There are options that come with the vehicle that at, at current state it doesn't come with you. You have to add it on. And sometimes when we add things on, it makes that current product a little better. And that's how society has been. They always want to add something. This plus that will, will grant your experience even greater. This plus that will offer a greater uh, time in, uh, in, in, the, in the event or the, or, or the subject that you are in. So they're always going to ask, hey, you need this plus that. And so even our buildings, or even our whole life, there's always options to make your life better, to add on to it. Like apart from that, you're not experiencing everything that you need. You need something more. You need something extra. And here we find Jesus having this conversation with his disciples. They found that his teaching was a little bit more difficult. It was hard to fathom. It was hard to take. It was hard to swallow. They didn't expect following Jesus would require this. It did. Jesus didn't meet their expectations. 
There were other things involved. Obedience. Walking according to his word. And basically what Jesus said is enough. Nothing else. Nothing else needs to be added to whatever God says. There's no, there's no uh, uh, connections. There's, there's no if, if God you do this, then I will. Unfortunately, that's how many of us live. We ask God, God, I will if, as if his words alone are not enough. Turn to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. And we're going to read verses 15 to 20. Colossians 1, 15 to 20. Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. He existed before anything else. And he holds all creation together. Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning. Supreme over all who rise from the dead. So he is first in everything. For God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ. And through him, God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth and by means of Christ's blood on the cross. Here the Apostle Paul is telling the Colossians here that, that, they, that there is nothing more that you need to add to Christ because they wanted to add other traditions to their walk with Christ. They wanted to add other, their worldly lifestyle as part of their walk with Christ. They tried to add on to what was expected that was not of God, but rather their own convenience and their own comfort. They wanted the, the pleasant things and say, God, can we just basically, let's put it in today's vernacular, that, that God, we can add all these other things. That Christ alone is not enough. His words alone are not enough. We need to add something. That's how many, unfortunately, that's how many denominations started. Because somebody somewhere said, hey, we need to add this. As if the word alone was not enough. That's how we have religious rituals today. That Christ alone, that his presence alone is not enough. Oh, let's not fool ourselves. We have our own religious cows. We do. We all have a certain expectation that the presence of God is not enough. So if we come to church, but I don't experience that, oh, I didn't have church. No, God is here. Is his presence not enough? Is the Holy Spirit not enough? We come and say, oh, I didn't like the song they sang today. Well, they weren't singing to you anyway. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, the, don't let something be missing out of the, the normal church schedule. That's not enough. I didn't think I'd get any amen on that one. Is God enough for you today? Is his presence not enough for you today? Do you understand the presence of God that is in this house 
is enough for you. Hallelujah. Why is it we come into the house of God? It is to only to meet with him. It is for no other reason but to meet with him. Oh, can let me tell you, people will disappoint you. Hallelujah. Programs will disappoint you. Hallelujah. All these other things. You're looking for all these other things to find satisfaction in your walk with Christ. That means you're putting trust in other things and you have left God alone by himself as if to say, God, you're not enough. I need these things as well. Why am I bringing this up? Because I'm telling you, we are entering into a season of our walk with Christ. Hallelujah. That everything may not walk, work out the way you want it. And the only thing that's going to sustain you is your relationship with Christ and in Christ alone. That's the only thing that's going to sustain you. That's the only thing that's going to keep your head above water. That's the only thing that you need to look to is in Christ alone. There was a song back in the days called In Christ Alone. Hallelujah. And so that is important. We place our trust in Christ. Why? Because he alone makes us complete. We don't need any more. We don't need Jesus plus tradition. We don't need Jesus plus these rituals. We don't need Jesus and these other things. We need Jesus alone. And when he becomes a part of our life, he is enough. When you start looking to religious rituals to complete your church service as if the presence alone is not enough. Jesus doesn't give you what you need. Jesus is whom you need. We always come looking, Lord, you got, because we honestly, we often base our walk with Christ based on what he does for us. He is a provider, nothing wrong with that. But what we have to come to grips with is if those things don't work out, is Jesus enough? Hallelujah. Let's go to Genesis chapter three here, real simple. God created Adam and Eve and he released them in the garden and He gave them the the whole garden. They could partake of anything, anything but one. So do you see how, 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 how our mind works? That the one thing God told Adam and Eve don't touch, that is the only thing they desired. In the midst of having everything at their disposal. They wanted the one thing that God told them don't touch. You see how deceitful the enemy can work in our mind. Hallelujah. What what, what am I saying here? God has blessed everyone here beyond measure. But yet the thing we want to bring before God is what he didn't do for us. Hallelujah. He has blessed us immensely, but yet our our life is ruined or our life is filled of worries. Why? Because God didn't do that one thing. Is how God has blessed you today, is that not enough so that we can have a grateful heart to him? The devil will always bring to remembrance what you don't have. He will always bring to remembrance what God didn't do. And then we live a life of ungratefulness. And then we begin to say, oh, God doesn't care. That God does not not love me. In the middle of everything he has already blessed us with. And yet, we put our focus and attention on the one thing that we don't have and then we live an ungrateful life I'm asking you again today church is Jesus not enough 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm here to tell you, the Bible does declare that he is also more than enough. But you can't experience more than enough until you experience that he is enough. Hallelujah. And I want us to understand that and have this mindset, glory, that, that until we know that he is enough, he is exactly what we need. He is exactly what a hurting and broken world needs. Glory to God. And all the while the enemy is causing us to be stressed out of what we don't have and what, and what, we, need, what we think we need. And yet it controls how we worship. That's why this point is very important. When you realize that he is enough, it will transform your worship experience. When you realize that he is enough, it will transform your worship experience. Because when you look and see all that he has already done, so I will praise him for that. But yet the enemy even controls our praise because he causes us to focus on what's not happening. Glory to God. Last week I've been talking, I talked about Moses a little bit. Hallelujah, that everything that he went through, that God pulled him out of Egypt. Yes, God had a plan. God saved Moses from the time he was a baby. The calling on Moses was evident then. Hallelujah. And yet everything that Moses went through, I, I don't know, unless you had this mindset. See, God then put him and pulled him into the desert and isolated Moses. It was completely diametrically opposed of what he experienced in Egypt. Why? Because he had the best things of Egypt. He, he probably didn't lack anything in Egypt. He had everything that he wanted. And then he went from a life of having everything he wanted into a life of, man, what can you get in the desert? And God used that moment. To tell Moses, yes, yes, Egypt provided all those needs, but maybe I had to pull you out of that. See, not only, is, not only are you physically being removed out of Egypt, he has to get the Egypt out of our minds as well. So he pulled Moses into the desert, not, not to pull Egypt out of his heart and out of his mind, because in Egypt he lacked nothing. Because somebody else, or it was already laid out for him. He didn't have to work hard. He was raised in, in the house of Pharaoh. He was raised in, they, they didn't lack anything. Everything was basically just given. Hallelujah. That's why I give many of your parents that are here, we hear the stories of many of you. You came from India with very little in your hand, especially the ones that came in the 70s and 80s. You had nothing. You want to know why church thrived back? I'm going to tell you why church thrived in the 70s and 80s. Because you parents, you had nothing but God. Amen. You had nothing but God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You didn't have anybody to give you a, a, a reference. You didn't have anybody to give you a way in. You had nobody to call and say, hey, can you help me get a job? You had nobody but God. Amen. That's why fellowships thrived in the 70s and 80s. That's why church thrived in the 70s and 80s. Because you had no choice but to trust God. Nothing was given to you. You had to work hard for it. Now, here's the problem we have. How have we relayed that work ethic to this next generation? Because now, 
Everything is right there. That's why fellowship is struggling in church. Why? Why? I have everything. I have everything I need. Why do I have to pray? Why do I have to be faithful to church? Why do I be faithful? I have everything. I go to a good university. I got a good job. Drive a nice car. Why, why, why do I have to come? Sit in my nice clothes. Altar, uh, y'all have heard me preach this. This altar's open, but hardly anybody comes up. Pastor, are you saying I have to come up? I don't know. What did God do for you? I want us to get into this mindset that Jesus is enough. He is the reason why we're blessed. He is the reason why you have what you have. He is the reason why you have favor. He is the reason why you're sitting right here. Is that, is that not enough for us to, to show some kind of emotion that God, I'm grateful. But no, the enemy has us focused on what we're missing. So therefore, I don't have a praise because I'm lacking. I'm lacking this one thing, so I'll stay here. Hallelujah. Is Jesus enough? Is he enough for, you, for him to be worshiped and praised? In the middle of your unanswered prayers, let's be honest, maybe some of the reasons our prayers are, are unanswered is because we have asked to miss. God never promised to give you everything you want. Hallelujah. Now, does he do that? Yes, he does. But we have allowed that to be our, the thread of our spiritual life that unless God gives me everything I want, is he still, excuse me, is he still God? That's very important. So we see, uh, let, let, let's go to real quickly, Exodus chapter 6. Exodus chapter 6 and verses 2 to 4. And God said to Moses, I am Yahweh, the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as El Shaddai, God Almighty. But I did not reveal my name Yahweh to them. And I reaffirmed my covenant with them. Under its terms, I promised to give them the land of Canaan where they were living as foreigners. You can be sure that I have heard the groans of the people of Israel who are now slaves to the Egyptians and I am well aware of my covenant with them. Even here, God is saying, you must learn to continue to seek him because we will never come to a place where I know him fully. He says, I'm Yahweh, but they did not know me as Yahweh. They knew me as El Shaddai. And see, sometimes we get stuck on one characteristic of God and unwilling to experience his other names and characters. Hallelujah. Don't get stuck with only one characteristic of God and then that becomes your revelation of who he is. He is much bigger than that. And your, God's job for you is for you to know all of him. So yes, you and I may experience various things so that his nature and character can be revealed. And then you'll realize that he is enough. You might think that you need all these other things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah all these other accolades or awards or recognition. But at the end of the day, what matters is, is who does he think you are? Does he call you his beloved? Hallelujah. Does he know who you are? Because you daily seek his face. You daily approach him. 
his throne with praise and with worship. Is Jesus enough today? Or do we need these other things? That is so important. That is so important that we must finalize in our way of thinking. That it is his love is enough. His peace is enough. His strength is enough. His joy is enough. Hallelujah. We are to learn to understand that Jesus Christ is sufficient to meet all of our needs. But hallelujah. But in the event, it doesn't quite match up to what we're expecting. Are you okay with that? Because he's enough. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so, so when we get to a point and understand that in Christ alone is, is where all of our needs are met. I'll get there. By daily communion with Christ, we find full satisfaction for all of our needs. See, the thing is, when we think about needs, we're thinking so on an external basis. But there are needs that God wants to meet you at that has nothing to do with what's in your hand. Sometimes it's the attitude of our heart that he's trying to work on. That's a need. So when we say he'll meet all your needs, oh, it's not just what he places in your hands. For if that's first and foremost of what's in your hand is what brings satisfaction to your walk with Christ, I will tell you, we will be as most miserable of people because that means based on what's in our hands, then my joy for the Lord is up and down, up and down, up and down because it's connected to what's in my hand. But when my satisfaction is in Christ and that's something that happens in my heart and in my spirit, then regardless of what's in my hand, the joy of the Lord remains in my heart because he is all that I need. So we really have to revisit, is Jesus all that I need? And is that enough? Or do I need Jesus and this job? Do I need Jesus and this attention? Do I need Jesus and this recognition? Do I need Jesus and this money? Do I need Jesus and? The devil has convinced us that Jesus is alone is not enough. And we have responded accordingly. So it is time that we shift how we approach Christ. Because I will tell you, people will fail you. Their ex your expectations of people that you want them to meet a certain standard in your life will fail you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is how, when you look at the, the, the New Testament church and all the disciples that went through what they went through, they experienced pain and loss. And yet, what kept them? What kept them in the ministry? It is that realization that Jesus alone is enough. So I want to encourage everybody here this morning that don't seek these other things in order to find satisfaction in Christ. Things, words, affirmations, prophecies, teachings, visions, dreams, all these things. Yes, Christ provides those. Hallelujah. But if my focus is on, on those things only, then my walk with Christ is based on those things. 
And that is a life that God is not calling us to live. So therefore, we need to come to the realization that God is enough. Always wanting other stuff but not wanting Jesus is a sign that we are lacking that foundation of who he is. And if we are honest, hallelujah, with, 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 with our own heart, then we need to understand this, that I have attached blessings to, to, to Christ in order for me to seem satisfied in my walk. And if that is us today, I will tell you, you will be disappointed. But if we can focus that Jesus is enough, Jesus is enough, then no matter what happens to us or around us, hallelujah. So if the recognition doesn't come, it's okay. If nobody pats you on the back, it's okay. If nobody calls out your name, it's okay. If nobody, hallelujah, recognizes what you do, it's okay. Hallelujah. Because Jesus, hallelujah, he's taking note. He's taking record. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, glory. It's okay if nobody recognizes you. You know, I think some of the greatest people that are going to receive rewards in heaven are the ones that receive the least on earth. Amen. Let me say that again. I believe some of the people that are going to receive some of the greatest rewards in heaven are the ones that receive the less the least amount of attention on earth. So don't let, don't let that be your focus that nobody saw me, nobody said my name, and nobody paid attention to me. Hallelujah. Because I tell, here, here's what I tell people. I do what I do because of what God called me to do. Not for anything else or anyone else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's how you should operate. You have a calling. Maintain your integrity and character in Christ because he called you. And it is him we're going to stand before. Hallelujah. Nobody else. So therefore, what you do on earth, let it not be, be controlled about the pressures of people and the popularity of people and the fame of people. I just want to know, is Jesus enough to do what it is you need to do? Hallelujah. And maybe you may not get recognized here on earth. That's okay, because that's not what matters. We, are, we will be standing before him. Nobody else is going to be standing next to you. Hallelujah. Your parents will not be, be standing next. Your children will not, your pastors will not be standing next to you. I can tell God, oh God, yeah, they came to church every Sunday. But God sees exactly where your heart is. I cannot even be your defender. Pastors cannot be your defenders. Hallelujah. You have to be able to stand before God. And you work with integrity and character in the kingdom of God. And he sees why we do what we do. So I want to encourage everybody here this morning. Let Jesus be enough. And that's all that matters. If you serve in this church, let Jesus be the reason why you do it. Not because you're trying to get somebody else's attention. That's the worst reason to do it. Hallelujah. Do what you do at work. The integrity you're at work. I know some of you may think, well, nobody else is doing it. No, walk with integrity. Hallelujah. I remember one time Emily shared this. She missed a promotion at work because her boss asked her to misrepresent numbers in the budget. She said, I won't do it. And it came time for a promotion and that person hired somebody else. Now we can say, oh my gosh. But what matters more? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is always watching. God is always watching. Be careful how we operate on earth. 
I don't care how much stuff you collect, how much recognition you get, how much, how much of these things you might get on earth. But if it's contrary to what God is calling us to do, yeah, there might be a temporary blessing. But when you stand before God, what was given to you on earth will be taken away from you at judgment. And which, and which matters most? Is Jesus enough today for you? No matter how much the devil throws stuff at us, this reward, these resources, all these things, recognition, hallelujah. But if it violates the integrity and the character of being a believer, it's not worth it. Jesus is enough. You tell your job, you can keep your promotion. Jesus is enough. You can tell your neighbor, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stand in my integrity. Jesus is enough. I will not do anything that violates what he is calling me to do. I don't need Jesus and that. I don't need Jesus and that. Jesus is enough for me. Everybody standing. So Jesus looked at his disciples because he was calling on them to live a, to follow his words. And then they couldn't handle it. The Bible says from then on, from that then on, many disciples walked away. I think it's very interesting. Jesus never cared for a crowd. In that almost opposite of today's day, everybody wants a crowd. But Jesus said, if you can't follow these words, and he didn't chase after him. He wasn't going to water it down. He said, oh, no, no, I'm just, hold on, hold on. maybe let, let's meet somewhere in the middle. Let's, we can do something. He let them go. Jesus approached the rich man. He said, sell all your stuff and follow me. The man walked away sorrowfully. Jesus did not chase after him. God is not impressed by your wealth. He does not need your money. That man would have been a great tither in the church. But because he wanted Jesus and his stuff, Jesus said, no, where I want to take you, I have to be only enough. So I want to encourage everybody here this morning. Is Jesus enough? Or is it Jesus plus other things? And that's why I'm at church. It's because of those other things why I'm at church today. It's because of those other things is why I worship. No, no, no. If those other things stop, will you still worship? Will you still praise him? If all those other things stopped, will you still praise him? If all those other things didn't work out, will, will you still be, hallelujah, at the altar praising him? Is God enough? And I pray to tell you today, God is enough. Did I tell you, did I tell you talk to your neighbor yet? Now go ahead, look at your neighbor. Tell him God is enough. Look at your other neighbor. Tell him, God is enough. Father, we just come before you. Lord, we are in this, in this situation of God. You are a provider. You do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. God, you have often given us what we wanted. You've answered those prayers. 
And God, yet we find ourselves in the midst of, of abundance. And Father, we have forsaken what we needed. And that is you. Father, I pray for every person here this morning. I pray you will minister to their hearts. I pray, God, that there are many here who are, Lord, frustrated. Lord, maybe discouraged by the things that are happening around them and to them. But God, I pray this morning they'll realize that you are enough. I pray you reveal yourself to them, God. Lord, not only as El Shaddai, but also as Yahweh. Help us to realize, God, that you are enough and you are all that we need. Father, I pray you minister to the heart right now that is broken, that is hurt. God, we, they've been praying for weeks and years and it still hasn't happened. And Lord, they're, they're discouraged. God, I pray right now, Father, give them grace this morning, I pray. Give them grace this morning, God. Father, we ask that you forgive us and we repent. For we have equated, Lord, the blessings equal with you. Father, that is not, that is not so. Lord, that we should never elevate anything. Not just above you, but equal to you. So today, God, I pray that everyone will walk out this place knowing that God alone is enough. So I thank you. We bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray.